Okay, so if you have a basic understanding of trigonometry and trigonometric ratios, well, then you should find this problem pretty easy. And the question is, we want to find the angle that has a cosine of one half. And we're going to be doing this problem without the aid of a calculator. And the way we would see this mathematically written is the cosine of what angle uh, in terms of degrees is equal to one half. Now, typically we solve these type of problems with a calculator, but in this circumstance right here, this is actually quite easy to solve without a calculator. And if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem without the aid of a calculator. This is an absolutely must know skill for those of you that are studying trigonometry. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take a look at uh, this problem one more time. So the cosine of what angle is equal to one half? And again, we're gonna express this angle in terms of degrees. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is the following. That angle would be 60 degrees. So the cosine of what angle is equal to one half? Well, that angle, again, is 60 degrees. Now I emphasize degrees because there's other ways you can express uh, an angle, namely using radians. So for those of you out there that are actually studying uh, trigonometry, you definitely have to be familiar with radians and you'd have to be able to do this problem and express your angle uh, again in radians. It's uh, very, very common to measure angles in radians when you uh, kind of study a full on uh, trigonometry, um, you know, material like in a pre-calculus type of course or a full trigonometry course. Okay, but again, we are talking about degrees because that's what the problem indicates. But if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, I have to go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in trigonometric ratios. And again, that's what we're talking about. Cosine, sine, and tangent. These are the basic trigonometric ratios that you'll learn not even in trigonometry. For most of you, kind of start learning this uh, in geometry. And if you never even uh, heard of this stuff or never you know, faced a problem like this, this is not that difficult. So let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Okay, so what we're talking about here is something called right angle trigonometry. It's basically the basics of trigonometry. And when you start uh, studying trigonometry, you first learn about something called trigonometric ratios. It's these lovely things right here, sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, if you ever wondered what these buttons are on your scientific calculator, S-I-N, C-O-S, and T-A-N, well, these things right here are trigonometric ratios. And there are other trigonometric ratios, but these are the kind of foundational trigonometric ratios that you learn. Now, if we kind of look at this term here, it's trigonometric ratio or ratios. So trigonometric indicates that, hey, we're talking about trigonometry, which is the study of angles and ratios are what? Well, ratios are effectively fractions. Okay, so we're talking about trigonometric fractions. And I think that's a good way to kind of um, think of trigonometric ratios. But let's go ahead and actually define these things right now, just in case you don't know what they are. Okay, so again, we are talking about something called basic right, uh, uh, right triangle or right angle trigonometry, okay? So this kind of uh, basically implies that we're gonna be looking at uh, sine, cosine, and tangent. We're gonna define these things in terms of a right triangle. So something like this right here. So this is a triangle and it is a right triangle because one of the angles here is 90 degrees, okay? So this is what we're talking about, basic right triangle trigonometry. All right, so we have this lovely little phrase here, so cut toa. So at this point, some of you might be saying, oh, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, now you're really confusing me. You're speaking a different language here, so cut toa, what does that mean? Well, this is a little memory aid, a little mnemonic to help, to help you remember 
uh, these trigonometric ratios. So what are they? Well, so is going to define sine, ka is going to define cosine, and t is going to define tangent. Now, although our problem here uh, deals with cosine, it's a good idea to review all three of these basic trigonometric ratios right now. Okay, so here they are. So the sine of an angle is equal to O over H. The cosine of an angle is equal to A over H. And the tangent of an angle is equal to O over A. So what are all these O, H's, and A? Well, let's go to define those things right now. Okay, so here is our lovely right triangle. And let's suppose the angle that we're considering is right here in this corner, uh, in this particular corner of the triangle. Now, if it was over here, uh, these uh, ratios would be, well, uh, the formula would be the same, but the lengths would be, uh, the lengths or uh, the variables here would be different. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing, but I think you'll understand what I'm talking about right now. Okay, so here is our angle. Now, if we want to find the sine of this angle, remember we're talking about trigonometric ratios. The sine of this angle is equal to O over H, and O is the opposite side of this triangle. So if you're looking at uh, this angle, this side is the opposite side in terms of where this angle is located. Okay, now H is the hypotenuse of the triangle. So Anytime you are looking for the hypotenuse, it's always the longest side of a right triangle, and it's always opposite of the 90-degree angle in a right triangle. Okay, but it's obviously pretty easy to identify because it is the longest side of a right triangle. So that is going to be our H or our hypotenuse. That's what that's called. So O and H are going to be defined by what is the side that is opposite and what side is adjacent, which means next to that angle. Okay, so you kind of have to, you know, really focus in for a moment and, and look at this angle and say, okay, what side is opposite to this angle? Well, this side right here, and what side is adjacent or next to it or forming the angle? It's this side right there. Okay, now, obviously, if the angle was over here, where would our opposite side be? Well, it would be over here, and our adjacent side would be here. So it depends on where this angle is located at in these right triangles. But in this particular case, uh, this is where our angle is for this example. Okay, now, now that we understand this, let's go ahead and quickly define uh, sine, cosine, and tangent. Again, these are our trigonometric ratios. All right, so once again, for sine, so the sine of this angle, whatever degrees this is, the sine of that angle is going to be equal to the opposite uh, over the hypotenuse. Okay, now, of course, this is a fraction, and oftentimes it will be some sort of decimal value, so we got to figure this thing out, right? All right, now, cosine is what? Well, that is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then the tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So if you can remember these formulas right here, and a good way to do that is to remember so katoa and a basic right triangle, well, then you will be good to go in terms of defining the sine, cosine, and tangent of respective angles. All right, now let's go ahead and apply, uh, apply this knowledge to our problem. So the problem is the following. Okay, we're trying to figure out the cosine of an angle that's equal to one half. Well, what is the cosine equal to? Well, the cosine of any angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, that means that our adjacent has to be one and our hypotenuse is two. So if we draw a lovely right triangle and we put an angle right here where the adjacent is equal to one and the hypotenuse is equal to two, well, we can figure out what this side is right here using the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. But there's a little bit of a twist to this problem, and that is the following. If you're at this level of math, if you have some sort of basic understanding of trigonometry, well, then somewhere along the line, you should have learned something about uh, right triangles and the Pythagorean theorem uh, to include special, okay, I'm going to write this out, special right triangles. All right, these are key, critical in order to solve or to actually learn trigonometry. And again, this is generally taught like at the geometry level uh, before you even get to full trigonometry. So what, uh, what are special right triangles? So I'm going to give you a clue, uh, clue right now, just in case you forgot. So there's two basic special right triangles that you need to understand. 
So the first is a 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree special right triangle. Uh, these have these type of uh, triangles have particular properties, but the one that we're dealing with here is a 30, 60, 90 degree special right triangle. You have to master these special right triangles, these two special right triangles, in order to really understand trigonometry because the problem that we're dealing with right here is a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. And uh, I'm going to show you exactly where the degrees are, and of course we're going to finish up and answer the question, which is, hey, uh, the cosine of what angle is equal to one half? Well, now we have kind of a visual uh, sense of what's going on in terms of a right triangle. We can get this side right here using the Pythagorean theorem, but to get the actual angle, we need to know something about special right triangles. Now, uh, I'll just uh, make one of the quick comment here. If we weren't dealing with a special right triangle situation, well then you would have to have your calculator available. And if you're old school like me, in other words, if you went to school in the 70s or uh, maybe even the early 80s, uh, certainly the 60s and the 50s and you know before that, you would actually have to use your book, your textbook, because no one had calculators really back in those days to figure this stuff out. But that is kind of a side topic. Let's go ahead and get into the rest of this prom. But before we do that, we're going to get into this, which is having you stop and say, you know what? This guy's not too bad. I think I will help him out and subscribe to his channel because he's asking for my help. I am asking for your help because I have a goal to reach as many people as possible. Uh, as a math teacher, I, you know, it does me no good to be a teacher unless I have people to teach to. And the more people, the better. There is a lot of people out there that need help in mathematics. So that is why I do these YouTube videos, but I need your help. And every time I post a video, I ask for your help, which is, hey, can you uh, you know quickly hit that subscribe button? And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. And hopefully you're getting some value out of this video. And let's go ahead and finish up this problem uh, because, again, this is a basic skill uh, in trigonometry. And, again, you learn this stuff. You kind of learn the basics of this in geometry. All right, so here is our triangle. Okay, so... This side, if you notice now, is the square root of 3. Now, you can get this side, square root of 3, by using the Pythagorean theorem, or if you just have recognition of a special right triangle. Now, in this particular case, we're talking about a 30, 60, 90 degree special right triangle. So, obviously, here is our 90 degree. Now, visually, you know, if you just look at this, obviously this side is 60 degrees because I'm saying it's 60 degrees and this side is 30 degrees. But let's suppose for a second you didn't see these degrees. Okay, where would the 60 be and where would the 30 be? Okay, well, obviously 60 is a larger angle than 30. So visually, which angle looks uh, larger? Hopefully you say, you know, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I think this angle right here looks to be bigger than this angle. Well, indeed it is. So uh, this is our 60 degree, this is our 30 degree, but you have to be really good at these special right triangles uh, so you don't confuse where the 30 and the 60 is located at. All right, so anytime you have a triangle, a right triangle with these ratios, where the smallest side right here, which in this case is 1, when the hypotenuse is double, the smallest side, okay, in this case you can see we have 1, the hypotenuse is double. So in other words, if we had let's say three here, and then we had six here, well, that's an indication that you're dealing with a 30, 60 degree right triangle. And this side is going to be the smallest side times the square root of three. So that's gonna be one square root of three. But let's suppose we didn't know that, and we're going to erase this here, and we wanted to uh, use the Pythagorean theorem. Well, we certainly could do that. And again, this is a, a skill that you need to understand. But let's just check this real quick. Uh, so here, uh, a and B, these sides are our shorter side. C is always the hypotenuse. So we would have 1 squared plus the square root of 3 squared. Is that equal to 2 squared? Well, let's just check this real quick. So 1 squared is 1. The square root of 3 uh, squared, of course, uh, is 3. And uh, 2 squared is what? That's 4. So 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 is equal to 4. So indeed, this is our side right there. Okay, so again, we're dealing with the 30, 60, 90 degree special right triangle. This is um, 
you know, a triangle. One of the triangles that you need to understand, the other is a 45, 45 degree, 45, 45, 90 degree special right triangle. And that's why we can do this problem without the aid of a calculator. So if you wanted to check this, you could go into your calculator, your scientific calculator, anything that has trigonometric functions like cosine, tangent, or sine. And uh, what you can do is uh, look and probably you have to hit that second key. Every calculator is a little bit different to get what we call arc cosine. So it's this little deal right here, cosine negative one. But basically, uh, when you um, hit like your second button and cosine, you should see this like on your calculator, and then you would uh, plug in your value, right? So in this case, we're looking, hey, uh, Mr. Calculator, uh, cosine of what, uh, the cosine of what angle um, the cosine, let me see, the cosine of what angle is equal to one half? That's what I'm trying to say. All right, so you would just ask your calculator, cosine of uh, one half, uh, cosine, arc cosine of one half is what? Well, the answer is going to be the actual angle. So in other words, if you go in and you uh, type in cosine of 60 degrees, you'll get an answer of one half. All right, so these are the skills that you need to understand in basic right triangle uh, trigonometry, and you definitely will, will, uh, will be using special right triangles and full-on trigonometry. Now, if you need help with this stuff, uh, let me give you a couple quick suggestions. Now, if you are only in interested in basic uh, trigonometry, I teach that in my geometry course. Now, you can find a link to all these courses I'm going to suggest here in a second. If you are not a math student and you're like, you know what, I just kind of maybe want to dabble around and maybe learn some of this stuff, well, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. In that course, I also teach you basic trigonometry. But if you really need to understand full-on trigonometry, well, then you have to check out my pre-calculus course because I have multiple chapters of uh, not only basic trigonometry, but advanced trigonometry. And trigonometry can definitely get pretty exciting. But this is all the stuff you need to understand before you get into fun stuff like calculus. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.